Yes, I do start up by saying it's a pleasure to be here this morning. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> actually, the person who ought to be here is uh, right up there on the screen. This is Rita Mopin. She's actually the director of the Calhoun County Public Library. And I'm actually here to tell her story about her, how the, the library became the center of the community and a literacy leader in the community as well as in the state of Florida. And the, the image that comes to my mind when I think about Rita is that little engine that could, you know? <laughs> the one out there saying, I think I can, I think I can. And that's, that's what, I, what comes to my mind whenever I think about this program and their library. They're small but mighty. And Rita sends her regrets. She's actually got an 89-year-old mother and she had to stay home to take care of her. Now, she's been a library director in the Calhoun County library since the mid-1980s and like so many of you out there she's worked hard to place the library in the center of the community and they've certainly succeeded as you'll hear her story it's all about words you've heard but it's good to hear them again it's about commitment collaboration and creativity all thrown together with a dash of political savvy southern style it's about collaborations, working across political borders, saying yes to those unusual partners, and being willing to give more than you get. It's about commitment, perseverance, and never, ever taking no for an answer. It's about creativity, going beyond what libraries traditionally do, and we've been hearing that earlier this morning, and being willing to continuously evolve your program to fit the current environment, whatever it is. And last but not least, it's about politics. Being out there and getting known, serving on boards, serving on task forces. Rita has said yes, yes, yes about any time she ever gets asked from the state library, from other economic development groups across the state. It's also saying yes inside her county. I'll tell you one of the things that she does every year on behalf of her board of county commissioners, she manages the local fish fry. <laughs> the other thing that she does, she staffs the hurricane shelters. So it's really being out there and building respect and trust and getting known and never ever being afraid to ask on behalf of the library and your literacy program. You see, I've known Rita for about 30 years. I actually now, of course, as you heard, work at the State Library, but I actually met Rita back when she worked with a, a six county library system that I was working in. So I'm gonna be sharing with you her story, some of things that I've observed, some of her keys to success. Of course, during this symposium, as you've been hearing, it's really up to you to take something that you learn between today and tomorrow and go back and put it into practice. The weather's beautiful here. It's nice to be in San Jose. But unless you go back and do something with something, uh, one little idea that you learn, and you do it pretty quickly because you know it fades fast. <laughs> so that's my charge to you is to just take something that you hear and, and apply it. And I think the, the when what you hear me tell the story about Rita, that, that her strategies and everything trans over, transfer over, whether you're a small, a suburban library or urban library. It's a lot of it's common sense that you'll know, oh yeah, I need to be doing this. Doesn't mean it's easy, but, but um, I think it'll cross over. Uh, you do have in your packet attached to my bio, uh, Rita Mopin's story, the Calhoun County Public Library, it's blue. So most of everything I'll be sharing with you comes from here. This story was actually collected through the American Library Association Office of Literacy and Outreach Services. It's in the collective wisdom section of their buildliteracy.org site. So you can go in, and there's some other stories too, again, that you, you probably will want to tap into. So let's take a step back and let's travel down south to the Florida Panhandle. And I don't know, how many of you are from the South? I'm just curious out there. So we got, we got some, some of you out there. So you'll be familiar with, you know, picture a little sleepy community bordered by the Apalachicola River. 
which was once known as the busiest river east of the Mississippi back in the 1800s. Calhoun County is small with less than 14,000 population. 32% of their people lack a high school diploma as compared to the rest of the state, which is around 20%. So those are the numbers. The community is not what you think of when you think of Florida. It's actually more like Alabama because we're up, you know, up in the panhandle, right next door to Alabama. And, and Calhoun County does not have those beautiful, pristine beaches that the rest of Florida has that, that drives the, the development. So the author, Gloria Jehoda, once called this part of the state the other Florida in the book by the same name. The county seat is across the river, if you ever want to read the book, from um, what some have called as the Garden of Eden. So if you want to go to the Garden of Eden, it's Panhandle of Florida. Spanish moss covers the trees, swamps fill much of the county, and state force limit their tax base. Fishing and hunting still keep the residents busy, and government is one of the largest employers. 80% of the people are white, 16% are black, and they have a growing Hispanic population, which is new to many of you who are living in rural counties. <coughs> and certainly many of the residents live in poverty and are on public assistance there. Now over the years, the Calhoun County Library has grown to having five libraries. And as Rita is always proud to say, we have one in each of our county commissioner's districts. Now this is one of the many ways that Rita balances politics along with service. She's quite skilled at this. The library system has uh, square footage 17,600 square feet. In 1992, Rita was one of the, the leaders in that area to help form a four county uh, pro, uh, cooperative public library system there, which brings them the technologies, training, it also qualifies them for state and federal library grants. And Karen Southwell is the administrator there now. So, what's their funding like? Well, I asked Rita to send this to me because I you know, keep as, as, as up to date. So, she sent this long list and it's got where all the grants and their local funding and all that. So, I added it up and about 340000 covers their basic library services. Okay, so that's what their funding is, $340,000. But what's really interesting this year is that they have about the same amount of dollars in eight different literacy-related programs. So you see, that's the, the funding. About 8,000 people in the county are registered voters. 40, they um, have 45,000 items in their collection. You know, collection's never been an area where they've had a whole lot of money. Uh, 70,000 items are borrowed each year, and 52,000 people come into the five libraries every year. So how did this library really get into this area of literacy and this transformation? And needless to say, it started right after the mid-1980s, right after Rita started working and take, took over as director of that library. About that same time, the library was one of several in the counties that were approached and asked whether they want to be involved in a VISTA project. Now VISTA, uh, it's federal, um, it's a project many of you are familiar with, the whole Peace Corps program. It's, it's very much like that, where you have a volunteer who's willing to give a year of their time. They re receive a small living stipend, and at the end they do get some funds that can maybe help toward college. So, so Rita said yes, and they became a part of the, that project. Well, it so happens that um, actually my husband, Jack Knoll, was the, the project developer and grant writer who came up with this idea. And he had some real good ties with adult education that he always leveraged on behalf of libraries. And uh, so around the same time, too, uh, he, you remember Title VI? You know, back in the old days, you applied up to the Washington for Title VI literacy grants. Well, Jack, that first year, he wrote, I don't know how many, cookie cutter grants. You know, it was when that word processor was kicking him out. So he just changed the name of the, the county, and, and he succeeded in getting all those grants. I was working in a small library. We got one, too, because of him. Um, so this brought together a real synergy of partnerships there. 
They provided training and many conferences centrally that helped bring people together and get to know each other and start building relationships. And by the way, Jack and I are a certified literacy couple. We met at a volunteer tutor, tutor training workshop, and it was 22 years ago as of this month <laughs> that we got married. <laughs> so it's all about collaboration. <laughs> oh, there's other stories I could tell, but I won't this time. <laughs> In many ways, Rita and the library would have been much less if they had tried to do it alone. I mean, they're a little county. The synergy of working together brought them bigger grants and opportunities to learn from each other, crossing those borders, you know, getting ideas, cross-pollination. Now, you know and I know that collaboration and cooperation isn't easy. But Rita and the rest of the Panhandle folks, their reputation for fairness, a willingness to give credit, and a commitment to people makes it all work. So what are some of the strategies within that? One is accountability. One of the things that Rita brought to this job was the fact that she worked in social work. So she knew document, document, document. Whatever you're doing, document what is happening. Document the impact. Definitely document where the dollars are going. And what she would do is she kept it, each program in a nice big fat notebook so that whenever I happened to go down and monitor a grant, here Rita would have everything right there for that grant monitor and just to, the impact of the program. It helped build the credibility for the program. Another thing she wanted to, she specifically said I wanted, that she wanted me to share with you was through that first VISTA project, they developed memorandums of agreement, MOAs, and so she still continues that to this day, and it talks about the responsibilities, you know, clear communication between and among the partners, certainly shared glory, all that is what makes a healthy partnership. Now getting to this point all does require a juggling act and, and certainly commitment. And it certainly would have been very easy once that Title VI funded left and, you know, all that to say, oh well, we're going to just move on but certainly not Rita and some of the others in the Panhandle. The Literacy Volunteers of America program in Tallahassee, which is located where I live, about 60 miles away from, from Calhoun County and Blundstown, took over the VISTA project. And it's a, it's a medium-sized community, you know, not, not at all rural, but their commitment, the relationships that were built in that early partnership said that, okay, we can trust each other, this thing is going to work, and of course the, the commitment to adult literacy, which we all have, is really so special. In earlier years, the community college, Okaloosa Walton Community College, which I have to tell you is 100 miles away from where Rita is, and not is, it is not the community college that serves their area, but anyway, they were looking for even start partners. And so they got pulled in through the school system, actually, in Calhoun County. So the, uh, the library there was quite involved with Even Start. Later on, the school system actually, the community college, I mean, actually put together a um, um, adult literacy uh, software online. And the Calhoun County Library jumped on it. There were several libraries in the Panhandle that didn't. And, you know, this was all being paid for separately. They didn't have to pay for it. For a big, good number of years, they were part of a multi-county project administered by the Florida A&M University. And it wasn't an easy partnership, but it brought laptop computers along with literacy tutors into these rural isolated homes. Again, this has been a while back, but something special. So programs and services continue to grow, and by this time, Rita was saying that she was providing services from the crib to the crib. <laughs> And yes, as I said earlier, Rita doesn't take no for an answer, and I've got a good example of that. It takes commitment and vision. Well, the Calhoun County Library applied for a grant to the Florida Department of Education, as did another library up in the Panhandle. FDOE, in their lack, lack of wisdom, I have to say, disallowed the grant application because they didn't know anything about public libraries and how we're governed and administered in the state. Well, when Rita Heard got that no, she got on the phone, she made an appointment, she walked up the hill to that big Department of Education building, and she told him her story. And based on her credibility, her political savvy, they got that grant. 
The other library didn't. They didn't ask. So where are they today? They're serving 140 students in their literacy programs, GED prep, um, certainly basic literacy, computer literacy, parenting. They have, to fit, they have 50 families in their family literacy programs. They're providing a wide variety of services. One of their newer programs is for the in-school teenage parents. They're actually administering that program in that county. Another new program that they have is an after-school program where they have homework help and the kids come to the, to the library there. They also get funding through the Governor's Initiative for Family Literacy. They're getting it for a second year. This is usually only a one-year uh, program. The reason they're getting the second year, they've been selected as being exemplary and a good model in the state. They get juvenile justice funds through a partnership with the Sheriff's Department. You don't know where your partners might come from. Through the PAC Success Academy, something that's in Florida, they work with judges and are assigned at risk families. Another newer program that they have is through Family Support Center, which provides subsidized childcare. And I know you're thinking, no, they're not providing the childcare. <laughs> but what they are doing is all those parents who are receiving the childcare. If they do not, do not have a high school diploma, they have to get adult, adult education help, and they're getting that through their library. Another new program that they have that's covering six counties is for a grant for $60,000. They send a registered nurse to provide hearing and visual screening to pre-K children. It all ties into school readiness and health literacy. This may seem like a lot of programs, and it is. They all do fit together to serve the whole community. And they certainly have a lot of talented people. I say a lot, but you know, a good number of talented people there who make this thing happen, who are employed with the library. And so Rita wanted me to share another piece of advice is that you have to hire staff who could ride more than one horse at a time. <laughs> now, yes, there have been problems. A few bad hires. A partner that maybe, maybe not, might have done something illegal. <laughs> Even start funds drying up. Drier, drier years with fewer grants. Even questions at times from the, the chair of the library board. In spite of these challenges, the library, library has kept its commitment to do what's right and it's paid off. Now when we started this, the library was located in this 30-year-old disintegrating, disintegrating building, falling apart facility. Now, over the years, the staff were working hard, weaving together all these literacy programs. There was someone out there watching, reading the local newspaper, and thinking. And then the call came from the fairy godmother. Now, I husband was thinking my analogy was silly, but I still think the Cinderella story fits this. They asked, do you want a new building? And needless to say, Rita said yes. Because this, what had happened is a local family who had lived, a, uh, a man who moved away, make, got rich, called the library, wanted to give back to his community and see what the library had been doing over the years, and said, okay, I'll pay for you a building. So this is one of the community rooms in there. And there's the old library and there's the new one. This library has a living room for the adults. It's 12,000 square feet. It's still not huge, huge, but wow, for, um, for this county and this program, it is tremendous. They have certainly computer labs. They have two large rooms, which you saw earlier in the photos and the pictures there. Guess what they double as? Hurricane shelters. So all of this came about because literacy is truly at the heart of library services in the county. And Rita's always proud to say that this new building came without any tax dollars. So. Just to sum up some of the other advice that Rita has, 
is to hire staff who've lived it, those with empathy and compassion, those who've earned their diplomas through the GED, many of the folks that work with Rita come from that background. And I tell you, just last week in a, in a meeting I was in with Rita, she said it again. She said, our library is revolutionary. You don't hear that much with libraries. We just sort of don't know if we think of ourselves quite that way, but Rita does. And lastly, another quote from Rita. It pays to be dumb enough to know that you can't do something. We give everything our best shot. So that's the story of the Calhoun County Library and Rita Mopin and all their successes. Thank you.